years and years of working on my own and doing very similar projects where you're kind of involved in something but there's no money to pay somebody else and it's it's about you and the director or the producer and you make it work it's very satisfying but it, it's very um, it, it, it's not very fulfilling it, it feels like you've done it and then it's gone mm. and it's you, it's so quick that you think I'd love to have done one more day just to get that last thing um, and it's I think every job is always like that even if you've got six months it's you still sit there going oh, why did we do that why didn't we do that yeah. Yeah. and I think the um, the thing about working on films that makes it so different is the collaboration with people so on on for example on Mission Impossible we did we had that they brought the schedule we, it was due to release end of October and they pulled it forward so it released whenever it released June July August I can't remember but it was much earlier so we had less time we had three months less time to finish it and what normally happens in a, in a team on a film is that you start with maybe effects editor, a dialogue editor, and an assistant, and they start the process and they get everything into place and they get everything organized. And the cut is changing all the time, so you're kind of doing bits and pieces, but you can't, you're also having to re-edit the sounds to the new picture cut, which is a, a, the worst thing for our, <laughs> for our trade is to have to keep You've got a sequence just perfect, and the cut comes back and it's like, ch -ch 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 -ch, and you have to start again. It's like it's not even worth trying to fix what you've done. You just go, okay, it's the like, we know what we're doing. We just have to do it all again, and you do that maybe fifteen times from the, the start of the sound to the end of the thing. You recut, 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 which is very boring. Anyway, so the normal process is you start with a very small crew and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as the film gets closer to the end. So you end up with maybe seven or eight or nine people at the end of the project. Um, and on Mission Impossible, we started with nine people. Day one, nine people, everybody. So in six weeks, we had the whole film was covered. We had three effects editors, uh, two assistants, two dialogue editors, um, a Foley editor, me. And what happened, the way we ended up working it was that all the editors would work individually on sections. So, okay, you're doing that piece. Not, so if you imagine, you could say, well, look, here you are. I want you to take care of all the cars in this film. I want you to go from the beginning of the film to the end of the film, do all the cars, the doors, the engines, the gear changes, every car, that's your job. And then you say to somebody else, I want you to do all the water for the film. Wherever there's any water, you do. And the problem with doing it like that is that they get very bored. Everybody gets really tired of doing the same frequencies, the same sounds. So we decided, I decided to say to the editors, okay, I want you to do this section, everything all the cars, all the bikes, all the water, all the air, everything. And then when you finish that, give it to me, and then I mix it, and then I give it to the editor, and he puts it in the Avid, and it goes back to what we're saying, working with producers and directors. The, the sooner you can give them material to have in their editing system, the more they get used to it, and they start to embrace it, and they're not waiting on the final day to hear it. They're, it's it's something very very familiar to them from a very early point. So it, on any project, whether it's a three day project or a, if when they're shooting, whatever they're making, and they have an editor compositing and putting it together, assembling it, I always recommend that people talk to the editor from the very beginning and say, what sounds do you need to help you cut the picture? What can we give you? that's going to make your job of selling the cut better because all editors like to put sound in but if you can put your sounds in early then your sounds are more likely to stay than a library, library sound effect or something else that they've found somewhere from another production that they did so we, that process is, it, is, is a, a really productive and um, time saving process because 
then the editor can listen to the sound and say, yeah, it's great. He'll play it to the director when the next watching that scene, the director will say, great, but can we change that? Can we change that? So already it's going backwards and forwards. Uh, I have a question. Um, the separation uh, of movie to different sound uh, designers or sound editors, yeah. sound effects editors, uh, what about um, the sound effects they use? So do you have your own... Uh, your own uh, sound libraries, which you record it? Yeah. Or, so do they all work with the su uh, same sounds? Yes. So what we do, okay. what we do is we, um, we start off with working in sequences, and the sequences, we have a server, so everybody has access to one hard drive with, with a library of effects. The first thing we do is, when everybody sits down like this, day one on a job, I say, okay, we have... Um, seven sequences that they've turned over to us that we have. They're not even in reels yet. They haven't put them into reel one, reel two, reel three. It's just sequences. So I want everybody to look at these sequences and everybody to go through their libraries, their own personal library, and start putting, making a library for the production. So you would do the same on your own well, film. Your technical definitions. Of what they should need, which sounds, uh, how the sounds. No, I let them. I let them all do it. I let everybody choose what sounds they've got that they think will be useful for other people. And you don't care about the technical permission. Uh, is it like an AV stereo or mid size stereo for me? So it's no. like, okay. And as if they like it, like if they're they like happy it. with it, and they 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 think it's the right sound, then put it in the library. And the library is, is, because it was a big team in this particular case, we broke the library down by editors' names. So everybody had a folder and they put their sound effects in that folder. And then everybody starts listening to everybody else's sounds and it becomes much more, everybody's collaborating and, and getting an idea of, oh, okay, have you got anything like that? Yes, I have, I've got this. We need to get some motorbike sounds because we don't have the sounds of these motorbikes and they need to be these motorbikes. So we have to go and record certain things. Um, but you don't, you know, you don't, it's amazing. Once you start talking to people and, and in the sound community, we talk, whenever I start a pro project, I always phone up other editors, other supervisors and say, look, we're doing this film. Do you have any Czechoslovakian Second World War cars? you know, something is absurd or bizarre. And they'll say, no, but so-and-so has, they did a film, and you go, okay, I'll phone so-and-so. So everybody's always sharing um, information, sharing sounds, because it, it, there aren't any libraries that specify certain things. They always, there's always something missing. You can buy a library for, they're ridiculously expensive. But you can buy the library and realize that it doesn't do what you want it to do. So you think, well, can I manipulate it? Can I sound design it to make it work? And no, you can't. The only way to do it is to listen to the recordings and then go and find a vehicle, in this case, go and find a car that sounds the same and get it to perform for you. So the art of recording is more about getting the performance of the sound that you want because everything exists. It's just, does it do what you want it to do in that moment? So... We, had, we have a built library, everybody puts their material in. One person does the sequence, gives it to me, I mix it, give it to the editor, comes back, we keep going on, Every, we keep moving like this. And then eventually, maybe after three weeks, the, the, there, is, there are enough sequences to start assembling them into reels. So you have reel one, reel two, all the way through to reel seven or eight. So it's a, a long cut. And when we get to that point, we put we, we have a drive, a hard drive for each reel, so no two people can be working on the same reel. So I have one editor working on the effects for reel one. No other editor can work on the effects for reel one because it's on that drive. And that means, as we all know with Pro Tools, relinking is a nightmare. But it means, it means you don't have to do relinking. It's all on one drive and it's good to do in any project you do it's good to have um, your media on an external drive rather than an internal drive because you can make your backup on your internal drive on your computer but 
if it's on an external drive, wherever you go with that, I mean, if you're doing it in your own facility, that's fine. But if you go somewhere else to get somebody else to mix it or to, to add some additional stuff, it's always on that hard drive. It's always referring to that media. Pro Tool, you just, it's like thinking Pro Tools. Where does Pro Tools always screw up? It's relinking. It's a nightmare. So you just think, I have to just make sure it's all in one place. So I'll have one editor, I'll say, right, I want you to do reel one, I want you to do reel two, three, four. And they all work on the reels. And then you say, okay, now I want you to do reel one. You used to do reel three, we used to do reel five. So everybody goes, okay, well, I've got all his work. I've now got... And you listen to it and you go, oh, it's really good. But I've got something that would be really nice there. And then as soon as an editor starts, dives in, everything suddenly has, oh, well, I can change, maybe do this. And for me as a, as a supervisor, it's really important to empower the editors so that they feel that their contribution is personal and that they have a, an involvement, that their emotion emotional attachment to the project is, is, is very strong because you get the best work from people when they feel that their work is being appreciated and that their work is, is um, being respected. That's very important.